What do you think will and will not be accomplished this weekend in Buenos Aires? I think that there probably will be some accommodation, some meeting. I don't think there actually should be one, though, because, you know, they may talk about winner take all in China, but really all we want them to do is to stop stealing our stuff, stop taking our intellectual property, and stop committing trade violations. And so, you know, to me, that's, that's pretty simple. And, and we don't really need to talk to the Chinese about this. We've been talking to them for decades about it. The last deal we had with them, September 2015, Xi Jinping stood in the Rose Garden next to President Obama and said, look, we are not going to cyber attack American companies for commercial purposes. They never stopped, Brian. So matter of fact, if, it's gotten so worse. So, Gordon, it sounds like you're saying even if we get some kind of a headline deal, you don't think it'll be worth the paper that it's written on? Yeah, basically what they're doing, they'll stall, they'll steal more technology, they'll commit more WTO, World Trade Organization violations. And this is not good for us. What we really need to do is just put on costs until they stop it. So if we, if people in the administration have your view, and we have to assume Navarro and others probably do, why even a try to make a deal then? Right? What's the point? If you're going to make a deal and you think the other side is going to dishonor it or break it, or get around it. Where's I, your incentive? Yeah, uh, precisely. I, I think, though, that... But then something... Then you don't do anything. Um, well, we do things, and that is we pile on the costs on, on China so that at some point they decide it's no longer worth it. They're taking hundreds of billions of dollars of U.S. intellectual property every year, and that means our costs on them have got to be hundreds of billions of dollars. When that happens, they'll stop, and before that, they won't. Do you think this will work, this, this tariff strategy, then, is a good one? Um, tariffs, I, I don't think, are actually going to do it. I think we'll probably have to go to something more coercive, like just banning the import of products that have benefited from the theft of intellectual property. Um, there are a number of things that we can do. I think Trump's general strategy is to disengage the two economies, and, and that is already starting to work, as you see some of the supply chains beginning to think about leaving Beijing. And so, you know, when you look at all this, Probably disengagement is the way the U.S. is eventually going to go. It's unfortunate, but the Chinese are leaving the U.S. no choice. A lot of CEOs watch this show. We know because we hear from them. If you're a CEO with manufacturing facilities, a supply chain in China, you're kind of waiting right now, right? I mean, sure. I've still got my supply chain. I need it. How long do you wait before you say, all right, you know what, just close it up, bring it stateside. We'll have to raise our costs a bit, but let's do it because we can't hold out forever. Yeah, well, I think that that's starting to occur already, especially low-end manufacturing is looking very much at what's going to happen in Argentina. Uh, and if there is a prospect of a deal, they'll keep their production in China. If there isn't, they'll move out very quickly. Even higher-end manufacturing probably at some point is going to have to leave because this conflict's not going to go away, whether there's a deal or no deal in the next couple but of days. But if you're, if you're China, then your back is being put against the wall. Well, no. And what do you do then? It's, you punch back. It's our back which is against the wall. I mean, because when you look at the theft... Do we of, have all the leverage, do you think? Because have, they don't buy that much stuff from us. Yeah, we have most of the leverage. Got to remember that last year, China's merchandise surplus against the United States was 88.9% of their overall merchandise surplus. That's enormous leverage that we have. We ran a $375.6 billion merchandise trade deficit. That gives us power. Also, we're the much bigger economy. China is only 66.2 percent the size of our economy last year. And in reality, Brian, we're growing faster than they are. Yeah, you, you think so? In reality? In I mean, reality. Because the numbers don't say that, Gordon. So you're saying the numbers are, as yeah. we say, cooked? Certainly they're cooked. But also we're seeing, for instance, China's critical manufacturing sector in November, the official Official PMI was at 50, means no expansion, no contraction. Probably the real situation yeah. is worse. Also, some of the underlying indicators that went into that PMI look really, really bad for the future. But aren't we kind of, what is it, the Hobson's choice, where the, the only outcome sure. is a choice of two bad outcomes, yeah, right? So, I mean, aren't we, are, we, are we cutting off our face to spite the head, as they say? I mean, well, you know, we cannot have run decades of misguided trade policy and expect to come out of this without cost. We will have cost. Yeah, could it take us into recession, Gordon? It, it could easily take us into Is recession. Is it worth it? Um, long term, yes. Because we have an innovation-based economy. If we cannot commercialize our innovation, we're going to become basically just a third world economy exporting agricultural products and maybe scrap metal. That is just unacceptable. You know, so you believe that no matter how bad the, the economic pain may be, 
it ultimately will be worth it, and this needs to happen. Absolutely. You got to remember, Brian, every year the Chinese impose a tax of several hundred billion dollars on the U.S. economy by stealing IP. And they do other things as well, which also impose a tax. So we're already bleeding.